dear Father, once again, we thank, we give thanks to the opportunity to be here, united. We know that we are going through a very special moment at this time. Therefore, we ask for guidance and protection throughout this lecture. For those that wish to be with us today and unfortunately couldn't enjoy, that they can feel in their hearts the love of God as well. And with that in mind, we ask permission to open our meeting today. So be it. Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. Thank good you. Afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, good we afternoon. You have something very special today, I think. Of course, from the Spirit's book is always uh, so many lessons, important lessons we have. So we are in uh, part four of the Spirit's book, uh, studying uh, the questions. Uh, we start with question 937, disappointment and shattered affections. So Philip is going to read for us uh, the, the whole I think. And then we are going to be, as usual, have uh, our reflections, conversations about the topic today. So, Philip, if you wanted to start. 9.37. I stream or can you, I mean, those who are in the computer? Okay. All right. 9.37. Is the discipline that leads to ingratitude and the fragility of friendship, another source of bitterness for the human heart. Yes, but we teach you to feel pity for the ungrateful and faithless friends as they are more unhappy than you. Ingratitude comes from selfishness and people who are selfish eventually meet hearts as callous as their own. Think of all those who have done more good than you, who are more worthy than you are, and whose kindness were paid with ingratitude. Remember that in his life, Jesus was ridiculed, despised, and treated as both a criminal and a fraud. You should not be shocked if you are treated in the same way. The knowledge that you have done good should be your reward in your present life. Do not worry about what people who have benefited from it say. Ingratitude tests your persistence in doing good. It counts in your favor in the future, and those who have ignored your kindness will be punished. The greater your ingratitude, the more severe the atonement. 938. Are the disappointments that ingratitude causes meant to harden the heart and turn it callous and insensitive? That is wrong. Virtuous people are always happy to do good for others. They know that if those they have helped do not recognize their kindness in this life, they will in a future one and they will then feel shame and remorse for their ingratitude. However, this knowledge does not prevent them from being hurt by ingratitude in this life. Could this pain lead them to think that they would be happier if they were less sensitive? Yes, if they prefer selfish happiness. Still, this sort of happiness is very pitiful. People must try to understand that the ingratitude, ungrateful friends who desert them are unworthy of their friendship and that they are mistaken in their thoughts of them. They should no longer regret the loss of these friends. Other friends who are better able to understand the motivation behind their acts of goodwill will take their place. You should pity those from whom you have received poor treatment, which you did not deserve, because they will receive severe retribution. 
You should not allow yourselves to be upset by their bad behavior. Your ability to remain unaffected by their ill treatment places you above them. Nature has given human beings the need to love and be loved. One of the greatest joys given to them on earth is meeting like-minded hearts. This sympathy gives them a taste of the happiness that awaits them in the world of perfect spirits, where love and kindness reign. This type of happiness is denied to the selfish. Okay, this is a very important topic, I think, because uh, it's not uncommon for all of us, you know, or for us to see people coming to the spiritual center saying that somehow they are disappointed with life because, uh, or with people and people in the world, because they are trying to do their best to help this or that person have uh, gone the extra mile to do something and the person the people in question uh were not or did not show any kind of gratitude so they uh, often say so what is the point at least i was expecting you know a thank you or some sign of gratitude um and i i think the spirits here go to a point to some points for us to analyze this topic uh, that first of all we are not expected to be doing good to have compassion to help others uh, waiting for re immediate retribution and even retribution on the part of the person that we are helping uh, we are uh, we should be doing that because somehow it, it is we feel that is our duty and we feel that is it within the reach of our possibilities and like we always uh, like to remind it's an opportunity that we are having of uh, you know being invited by the good spirits by by jesus to be of assistance to people. We often say that when assistance comes to us, it is because we deserve it. And it doesn't matter from where it will come, from if it's from a good friend, if it is someone that we are, we, ba we basically know very little, they are going to be the instruments of God. But of course, on the part of the people that keeps on being the recipient of, you know, a goodwill of people helping and they continue with their hearts so hardened, maybe this is what could explain as well why in the current incarnation, so many people say no one uh, is willing to help me no one can assist me regardless of how nice I, I am to people it seems that no one feels like retributing this niceness and being here for me in my times of struggle maybe it's because exactly they have uh, not reacted well in other existences and now they have to feel themselves uh, what it is not to be assisted and not to show a minimum of, of gratitude. So there are many other things to comment, but I would like you, you know, to, to say something, to comment as well, to... So uh, let me unmute everyone. Uh, if you feel there are too many... Hi, Zhu, it's Larissa. I'm going to mute myself again because I have a lot of noise, but I just wanted to say hello to everybody. Okay, hello. Hi, I miss you and love you. No one has anything to say?
you to everyone. And uh, the ones that want to talk, uh, just uh, mute yourself, okay? Oh my God, you don't have anything to say about ingratitude? <laughs> okay. Huh? I think it's because we all agree with you 100%. There's nothing else to add, really. You're right. But there, there is so much more in the text here in terms of, you know, selfishness. Uh, I, I like it so much when they say here that, you know, people that try to excuse themselves on the grounds of saying, oh, every time that I help, no one really cares. Oh, I have I've never received the reward I was expecting. Uh, I'm no longer going to do that, they say here. They prefer selfish happiness. I love sometimes when, you know, when we find these pearls uh, of the spirits because, you know, they, they are blunt. They just go and say what is true. So don't hide yourself thinking or trying to, you know, to trick people into believing that just because someone uh, wasn't grateful uh, when you did something for them, you no longer are going to help others. I'm sure that we all have faced that. Uh, we all have, to have faced circumstances where we, we did our best, we tried our best to, to help others, but uh, I mean, there was not even uh, no response and even dis disdain, disdain sometimes. But it's, uh, on the other hand, how many people have we already did so little, much less than perhaps we, we did for, for others, and they come and they say, oh my God, uh, genuinely, you know, say, wow, uh, just what you said this to me, just because, you know, uh, it, you know the little the little things of life how much it has uh, you know, the, you know um, attention care and all of that so they no, i i agree with you i think also is because we never know where other people are coming from yeah. and what they're going through in their lives and so you shouldn't judge right you don't know what's going through even if you think you do and you're trying to help you really don't Okay. And if you need a thank you or an acknowledgement, that's for you. Yeah. That's really to appease your ego. It's not yeah. to be helpful. I so think, that's my two cents. <laughs> I think that uh, one of the things we need to recognize is that sometimes when we do something for someone, they may be overwhelmed by the fact that we did it for them, and mm -hmm. they are unable at the moment to say anything. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I was going to say as well that sometimes, you know, there are people that they are so hard and so, so bitter that uh, sometimes even saying uh, thank you like this, you know, to them, if we knew them well, we would know that this is gigantic already in terms of their past personality but we are expecting you know this is always our expectation and and i mean like we always comment on the spiritist center every time we have the opportunity of helping and see uh, really that this was a good help a good assistance we should be the ones thanking god the good spirits for having trusted us to become the instrument of assistance to somebody else. So now is this person also thanking God and not us for sending someone in their way to, you know, assist them in their time of need or whatever need we are talking about. I, okay, I know maybe this is too much. This is not for perhaps the average people, for people who has nothing in terms of, you know, spiritual values. But the reality, and especially for us, 
we should never having known a bit of you know the the having a knowledge a little knowledge and it, it doesn't need, need to be that much from the you know the lessons of the spirit, the the commenting and expanding on the teachings of jesus we should never feel this way uh, or uh or remain this way okay it may we may have you know the the, the disappointment of the surprise of not seeing any kind of reaction on the part of someone that has received the benefit but then we will say, I don't know how much is hurting actually. And perhaps in my perspective, this was a huge help, but it was, you know, maybe not, or maybe the, the person is so hurt that is not even capable of saying anything like Philip said as well, you know. So uh, the lesson here, I think uh, most importantly is for us not to let ourselves be overtaken by disappointment and to make this be an excuse for us to stop our progress because everything that re is related to our emotions or to fine and pure emotions will uh, get in the way of us actually you know moving forward faster one other thing I, I have had experience with is that people have ideas of who we are. And uh -huh. when we do something for someone, they may be so surprised that they ask others, are you sure that that person did that? Yeah. Yeah. So that's the other side of that same coin. Mm -hmm. And they wouldn't ask for help because they think you wouldn't give it. Yeah. And even from our perspective, sometimes, you know, from the person's perspective, uh, so to say, you know, they can have interpretations such as like, okay, I went to, to, to talk to a priest for advice. It was within the, it's his role, his obligation to assist me. Uh, or someone uh, that is very wealthy, uh, send me money for food. Oh, you know, they are too rich. They, sh they should be doing that the same. And, and, and I mean, this is another thing that is getting in the way of us seeing that no one is obliged to do, to do things. Even if, uh, uh, if uh, it is within their role. I think also this lesson invites us to meditate on two sides. Mm -hmm. There are the moments where we are ungrateful because somebody does something for us and lack of humility or whatever it is within ourselves that it might be sometimes shyness. It might be like uh, so many reasons why we don't do it, but we are not grateful. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this case, when it's about being ungrateful, for me, the experience I have when I pray and I meditate about the moment, right away comes a feeling of gratitude for that person or that situation. And I try to answer right away back then. And I realize because of my level, specifically I'm talking about myself, oscillates ups and downs. <laughs> when I'm in the downs, I'm grateful. When it's in the up, grateful. So my technique for this is, I, in my case, pray as much as I can to try to elevate my vibration because then I see the same situation uh, in a different way, a more compassionate and grateful way. The second aspect is when you do something for someone and you're expecting something back. And I mm -hmm. think uh, we need to meditate about that. Why am I doing that? I'm doing that because the good comes from God and is a divine source that I want to just share or I'm expecting a, a retribution or some kind of praise. I think we are, we are, we are falling on these two aspects in our lives daily basis. And as more we try to meditate and reflect about that, we're going to find balance in both situations because we can find ourselves in both situations depending on where we are, yeah? Mm -hmm. And a good point that you brought uh, as well, Adilson, is that we are complaining about others being ungrateful. What about ourselves? 
And what about ourselves in relation to God? Are we really, truly every day thanking God for everything that happens to us? And I mean, how much, and, and, and this is what it is. Uh, we want others to do things, to react in ways that we do not react. And here we're talking about God. We're <laughs> not God, right? <laughs> At all. So uh, that's why in this page, the spirits uh, help by saying, uh, by reminding us everything that Jesus went through. Jesus only brought good things, only helped people, only taught people in each and every way, in every second of his life. And what did we do to, to Jesus? So, and now here we are thinking the world is horrible. Uh, I'm no longer going to do anything good. And again, pay attention to see if this is not an excuse for us to continue living in your selfish way. I'm sorry to say that, but it is not me saying <laughs> it's the spirits, you know, the selfish happiness. Um, we have to, to pay attention to that. We are the ones here begging for opportunities to grow and to be of service so that we can actually learn and, and, and grow spiritually speaking. And when the opportunities come, we are here waiting for retribution from, for, you know, for silver plates saying that we are great and et cetera. And this is not the way it should be. I, I, it always touched me a lot. And uh, I mean, the first person that I remember saying that was um, the speaker, Raul Teixeira, uh, which unfortunately now because of the AVC he had, he is, has not been able so far to give talks, but he was a great speaker. And of course he was uh, applauded a lot. And he always said, every time I hear an applause, I, I innerly send this applause to God because I understand and I know that everything that I'm capable of doing is due to the grace of God. And so, you know, again, it's the same thing with us. Whatever we do, whatever the opportunity we are having to, to do good deeds, we are the ones that should be grateful and uh, actually act in this sense. Any more comments or questions in relation to something true? Yeah. Uh, when, when we read, the first thing that came to my mind was the other, um, the, the chapter in the gospel that says, don't let, your, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. So I think it ties in nicely to the question, when you give, whatever you give, your time, your money, your, 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 your love, your attention, um, if you expect to be rewarded and your reward happens you get the glory on earth, you already paid for that. That's not what the, the objective is. So the same here with feeling ingratitude. Ingratitude hurts. It hurts a lot when you practice something to those who love or with an effort and uh, you make an effort to extend your hand and, and you receive ingratitude, it hurts. Mm -hmm. But in the same way, when you give material uh, um, alms or, or any kind of assistance, you should not let your left hand mm -hmm. know what your right hand is doing. In, in this case, your left hand is yourself. You mm -hmm. should not be expecting anything back, mm -hmm. which is the hardest thing to do. I try and fail every time. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think those two ideas um, tie in very nicely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyone else? Let's see. So Lillian, could we, you read the next topic for us, the antipathetic relationships? Sure. 
Antipathetic relationships, 939. Since sympathetic spirits are spontaneously attracted to each other, how is it that this love is often one-sided, that the most sincere affection can be met with indifference or even repulsion, and that the deepest affection of two individuals for one another may change into dislike or even hatred? It is an atonement, but only a short-lived one. Moreover, how many individuals believe that they are desperately in love because they judge one another based on appearances only? But when forced to live together, they soon discover that their affection was nothing more than a passing whim. Is it not enough to be taken by someone whom you imagine to be endowed with all sorts of qualities? You can only determine the worth of the appearances that have captivated you by actually living together. On the other hand, how many of these relationships that at first seem as though they never could become sympathetic grow over time into a tender and lasting affection based on respect that grows between the parties through the development of a more complete familiarity with each other's qualities. You must not forget that it is the spirit that loves and not the body. And when the illusion of physical attraction dissipates, the spirit sees reality. There are two kinds of affection, that of the body and that of the soul. And they are often mistaken for one another. The affection of the soul, when pure and sympathetic, is lasting, while that of the body is ephemeral. This is why people who think that they are in love eternally often despise one another when the illusion fades away. Fades away. 940. Is it a lack of sympathy between individuals who are destined to live together, a source of sorrows, and one that is most bitter because it poisons an entire life? It is very bitter, but it is usually a misfortune of your own doing. First, your laws are at fault, because how can you imagine that God intends that people who dislike each other should live together? Second, you yourselves are to blame, because you often seek the satisfaction of your pride and ambition in those relationships rather than the happiness of mutual affection. In such cases, you undergo the natural consequences of your folly. Item B, but in such cases, is there generally an innocent victim? Yes, one for whom it is a heavy atonement, but the accountability for such unhappiness falls upon the individual who caused it. If the light of truth reaches the victim's soul, faith in the future provides consolation. The causes of these private troubles disappear as your prejudgments are dispelled. Well, we could have a, a workshop with this. <laughs> with this here. It talks about all relationships, about the birth of love, and what is really love about gender, about uh, divorce and separation. It talks about so many things, but we will try, you know, to, uh, to summarize, not to go into too deep. Uh, and I think the spirits here give us a, a, a lot uh, to, to think about, to reflect in terms of... Uh, relationships in general and here again we are not talking only about uh, couple relationship we are talking about relationship uh, with uh, with everyone all meaning meaningful and in deep relationship we may have with a friend with a sister 
with a parent, with a child, with a spouse, it doesn't matter. We are talking about, you know, meaningful relationships. And so in terms of this meaningful relationship, it's incredible, the, the question from Kardec here, I mean, uh, I'm going to even to read again. Since sympathetic spirits are spontaneously attracted to each other, how is it that this love is often, often one-sided? and that the most sincere affection can be met with indifference or even repulsion, and that the deepest affection of two individuals for one another may change into dislike or even hatred. This is a brilliant question. You know, I think uh, when, when we read that, you know, Kardec was on point on, when he, he asked this, and how the spirits explain and try to show us here that there is history behind all that. Not only the history that each one of us as individual spirits, we have from the many experiences, incarnation we had that makes us be today, uh, you know, the sum up of everything and have within us all of these emotions and feelings and experiences. But also when we are talking about, you know, uh, how we may have have a previous uh, knowledge and relationship with the person we are talking about here that one day we have the utmost respect and love for this person the following day maybe not or maybe at first this person uh doesn't click at all for us. We don't don't feel like, you know, and again, we are not talking only about romantic relationship. Okay, maybe you have the experience of, you know, a friend that has a wonderful friend and said, oh, I have to introduce you my friend that I love so much. We are all going to be good friends and you meet the friend and uh, you don't feel it. It's not like this, and not is it not not necessarily because of jealousy? Because now you have to you know to share the common friend, but it's because you really didn't feel anything, and and perhaps even felt a, a kind of repulsion, and so that this is where the spirits here explain to us about you know uh, the the. The, the previous conditions uh, that may have led to some history with, with us or, you know, the different kind of interests uh, that we may have. And especially when we are talking about relationships as couples, you know, I, I think it's, it's really so important when the Spirit explained to us here that in God's eyes, and this we have also in the Gospel according to Spiritism, there is not nothing wrong with couples separating but it doesn't mean that it's saying oh okay just go and you know go uh, building relationships and if it doesn't work just split and and this is it no it, it is actually telling us that we have not been careful we, we were not paying attention to the true values that actually can sustain a good and healthy relationship that most of the time we are talking about the satisfaction of material needs that may include financial or power interests or that may include, you know, of course, everyone in their early 20s, early 30s are may be good looking. And after that, not necessarily anymore. And uh, the difficulties of, uh, you know, the day-to-day -day, uh, living with people. And even in the cases, like they say here, that we see uh, struggles, struggles in relationships. Uh, and they say, in this case, we have an in innocent victim. No one is innocent. Uh, in, in the sense that... I may be innocent in the sense that I say, okay, uh, before my reincarnation, I agree to go and have this difficult relationship because I know that I'm in debt with 
this kind of situation with this person uh, with something that will come out of this relationship so in a way uh, I, I'm accepting I'm in a submissive situation but knowing innerly speaking at least unconsciously speaking at least that that was the choice that I made in order for me to advance and to feel guilt-free, something like, like that. So what else would you like to talk about this? It talks here about lasting affection. It talks here about di two different kinds of affection, the one of the body, the one of the soul. It talks about uh, um, our expectations, uh, pride, ambition. I think we are all being challenged in this moment, staying at home to really reevaluate how is our relationship with our roommates, with our family members? Yeah. As each case, I'm sure that each one of us are going through a different experience. But the fact that we're spending so much time with our children, our partners, some mm -hmm. of us, uh, is a moment to really to reflect at what kind of bond we have with one another. It's really a spiritual connection that uh, is becoming stronger and uh, allowing us to expand and multiply the blessings. Or you are feeling that we have the worst enemy at home. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it uh, doesn't matter which it is, we are all being invited to, to, to regenerate this experience. I was thinking about a lesson, I just took a picture I'm going to put on the group for you guys to read in the, uh, after the meeting. Uh, uh, if you feel like it's renouncing from the way, the truth, and the life mm -hmm. uh, by Emmanuel, lesson 154, mm -hmm. where he say like in our level of evolution, we're all going to have experience with people that are atonements and uh, trials because that's why we're here. We're here to learn and to grow, to expand. But the ones who are capable to cope with this experience and bring something good until the end, he doesn't say to stop, until the end, it might be that in the next life or even in this life, you're going to be with the ones that you love most. Mm -hmm. But I think we are being invited to learn how to cope, to develop resilience, resignation, patience, and see what is the emotion that is triggering myself when I'm spending time with this co-worker, with this friend or family member, that I need to work on myself. Not to looking so much about the other person, but what in them is awakening me that need to be addressed. And I think we all have so much that you can work on ourselves, yeah? When you're talking about spending time with somebody else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who else? Come on, people, there's so much here. <laughs> I know. I, I, I could say something with, um, when, when we talk about children, and I, I know many of us have and many of this group don't have. For the ones that do have and have grown children, um, I, I, I went through a series of many, many years of misunderstanding, um, and I, I have four kids, and the one that gave me the most difficult was um, uh, my daughter and I have three sons and one daughter I have okay and somehow throughout the years she was very very difficult especially to teens now anyone who has children know that teens are uh, I think the roughest time in our lives but in a way of, of, of learning and and somehow or other through difficulties I had with her I, I sort of went through changes but kept myself um, not going over the edge of, of doing or saying things that were ugly. Um, somehow or other, I, I started spiritism at an age that she was very young and I was learning spiritism. And I think that throughout the years, somehow or other, uh, God and Jesus were there with me holding my hand and my heart, hang in there, it's soon going to be over. And there was many, many times that things could have gone astray really, really bad. But somehow or other, I kept myself in intact and, and controlled um, 
through the little bit that I knew about spiritism. And so now, at this uh, years have gone by, she is 51, I believe. <laughs> and you know that she is my best friend. Oh, wow. Um, amazing that I could talk now, and I don't want to cry, but she, if any, I have three young men and uh, this this daughter, and she's gone through a whole, whole lot. But because I, I knew there was much more to, to this, God doesn't create us um, ugly and, and, and hateful. We do this to ourselves. And yet, she calls me every day, and I, I think of the de- times that I had these difficulties with her, and and I can't, I can't fathom that who she became. She's not very healthy in her in her in her health, but he's a totally different person. She's so concerning. She's loving. She cares for me. And I thought at the time when I went through the difficulties with her, that who is this person? She hates me. You know, when she was born, I was the happiest woman in the world. I had three, two boys, and she came along, a, 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 a girl. I was the happiest person in the world and brought her up with so much love. And all of a sudden, at this time, her teenagers, her teen years was so, so crucial. And But there was, I always had something in my heart that there is more to this than this. It can't be, but I held on and didn't become crazy. Um, spiritism came into light at a perfect time for me. And now I see, and now she, we speak about uh, death. We speak about anything. And she listens. And whether she studies spiritism or not, this doesn't concern me. I think she has the idea that she knows who I am and I love her dearly. And, and this love take you to the ends of the world. It, it's this love that's so strong. And no matter what happens, we know that it, it is more than just this life. And this is why spiritism is so important, so crucial, especially now, this time of what we're going through. That it's just not one phase in life. There's so much that we have to um, think of and and appreciate no matter what goes on, that God is is good. And everything that Jesus has brought us to to this day, we understand. And that's why I'm I'm so happy that I've gotten to this point in my life that I know that she loves me. I know she loves me, and I thought for many years that she just disliked me, she hated me. And things that she tells me now, I'm just, I'm so grateful. I'm so, so grateful. Uh, I'm so, so happy that everything that we learn gives to this uh, life that we're living and why we're here, where we're going, and what are we supposed to be doing now. To have faith, just like we studied yesterday with faith in our, our meeting, everything comes to this point of, in life that it is not what we think. It is good. It is good. And uh, I'm grateful, if anything, for that, that our relationship became something that I couldn't imagine, uh, you know, to this point that she'll tell me, I love you, Ma. Take care of yourself, Ma. I, I, to go back to think, I can't believe that this is the same person. So I'm grateful for that. Wow, that's amazing. Thank you, Soraida. This is Thank so beautiful. You. And uh, you have uh, patience to wait. Okay. And now you have uh, <laughs> her by your side. This is beautiful. Yeah. As the mother of a 13-year-old girl who, when she was two, I saw myself like sitting on the ground crying, thinking I'm not going to be able to raise this child. Um, It gives me a lot of hope. 
<laughs> when I see her yeah. selfishness and, you know, her struggles to, so it gives me a lot of hope because I, I look at her and I look into her and I see, I say, there's something awesome in there and it's going to blossom yeah. and it's going to blossom. And so it gives me um, comfort. Thank you. Be patient. Be patient, you'll see. Okay, anyone else? I just want to give a testimony. I'm on the other side of the coin. I'm the difficult child. <laughs> I'm the kid of nine children. My mom has 12 children, nine alive. I'm the youngest. And I know uh, all, until all my adolescence, I was a nightmare for my family. The whole family, really like the most difficult child ever. And today, looking back, I'm 48. My mom passed away, my father as well. But I'm so grateful for so much renunciation. I'm so grateful for so much patience that they had towards me. Not only my parents, as well, my siblings. And uh, well, the only thing that I can say from the children yeah, side is such a feeling of gratitude that uh, I would give many, many lives to do anything for their, their happiness. So don't ever give up on someone, yeah? Right. So for me, I also have a 13-year-old. Um, and let me tell you, it's been challenging times. I can do no right. So, so Ryan, I'm looking forward to the day when that changes. Thank you for sharing that, you know, your story with us. That was a beautiful story. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, I think, you know, the this lesson, uh, uh, it calls our attention to about the importance of us investing in the relationships we have uh, in, in trying to look for the true values when we are, you know, if we are friending someone, why am I friending this person? Oh, just because everyone is friends with this person because it's a you know an important person or because really we have something in common or I have something to learn or I have something to give. And uh, one of the most important things that we I, I, I take for me in terms of spiritism is, well, none of us are, of course, we are far from being perfect. So obviously we have so many things that we you know have to learn that you ha we have to better in ourselves and 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 so i always think about the law of progress because even when i see someone behaving in ways or choosing paths that i i know uh is not good or i do not agree with uh, or i i i, I understand that is against uh, what we have been learning in terms of spiritual growth i know that this person very much like ourselves we are going to get right it sometime it's just a matter of time so we cannot lose faith and hope in people. I mean, is the, the path of everyone is the path of progress. And so even if now we are, you know, jeopardizing our lives, compromising our future or the near future, we will all come to a point where we will have to review all our concepts of life, everything else. And finally, you know, we, st we start moving in a different direction because this is, uh, you know, we can only astray for so long. Uh, and when the pain and disappointment and, you know, and the people we have affection to we start moving forward and we stay backward, we will feel the need as well to, to do something about it. So we all have the right to do to be wrong or to do 
doing wrong things, we shouldn't. I'm not saying because we have the right, like Paul of Tarsus said, uh, uh, everything is allowed to me, but not everything is convenient to me. So it will come to a point that we will see that our decisions, our choices are not the best one in our own interest, that we are being left behind and everyone is advancing. And what should those that have advanced do? start saying, oh, you're never going to get uh, it right. You, you are so bad because this is the problem. We label people so much uh, and we, we, we put it in a frame, you know, uh, a, 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 a moment where we saw them perhaps disappointing us. And we forget about everything else. And we forget that very much like ourselves, Everyone is struggling and is struggling to get right because no one is going, I mean, uh, or, or, or should not be going, choosing wrong things, knowing that they are going to, uh, uh, to, to hurt themselves. I, I do not choose a way that I think that I'm going to, uh, even if, you know, if we think about a criminal, the criminal is just thinking about now. It's not thinking, well, I don't know if I'm going to, you know, have to deal with that later on. So uh, let us remember that, be reminded of that all the time, you know, when we, uh, we think about judging others, when we think about judging people that we have a relationship with others, we are always struggling. Uh, with ourselves. Uh, we are all dealing with our own disappointments and frustrations. And it's so important to have people next to us that believe in us, or at least believe in uh, the potentiality that we all have as children of God. Okay. Anything else? That's what I mean, you like we never know what's going on in anyone else's life. Yeah. Because sometimes and you think you know the struggles of your good friend or your family member, but they may have other stuff in their heads, other demons that even if you're so close you still don't know. So whatever reactions, right? Mm -hmm. We we only see what they're showing us. Yeah. So like with my son, you know, I am 13 and it's been so hard, especially his being home. He hates this remote learning, homeschooling. That's why I had to be on mute because like, he's always every second and he's so negative on himself and yeah. it's just been so hard. And I'm sure it's the same for a lot of parents right now and like keeping them positive and, you know, you just. Yeah, and I, I myself don't know everything that's going on in his mind and in his heart, right? All the fears he has and all that, mm -hmm. and I'm his mom. Yeah, so. can you imagine? Okay, Adilson sent to us the message, uh, so please read it, uh, the... Uh, when you have the chance at the book, The Way, The Truth, and The Life, 154. We don't have that much time now to do that. Uh, we have time for one last comment, if someone would like to do the comment, and then we can go to the final prayer. I just want to add that as, uh, since I've been studying Spiritism, um, I, I see things more like family members or some friends um i see a lot of either is an expiation or is a trial either is to better yourself in 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 get into a higher um better yourself overall your morally and um or is something that you you chose before you came to this life that to overcome and, and learn with it and and be over and have the spiritual progress yeah it, it's obviously something you know everything that is so such an important part of our lives it, it was a choice uh 
I mean, we may even perhaps we're not that happy when we had to choose it, but it was that sentiment that it's inevitable and I cannot delay that any longer. And again, the idea is not that we are going to be, um, um, so to say, get rid of it, you know, be over with yeah. it. It's more like, you know, we're going to transform it. So what today is a difficult relationship? What today we have the clashes? What today it's so hard to deal with? Tomorrow it should be one relationship that has been transformed. Very much like, you know, the example that Soraya gave to us. You know, some of us may be blessed enough to experience it in our lifetime. Others will just experience it later on. But this is, you know, what uh, fraternal love means in terms of, you know, loving all humanity. And it starts at home. Uh, and it, that's why it's such a struggle. <laughs> this exercise of, you know, loving humanity is starting for the small circle of people that were chosen to be next to us. Some of us, we have uh, put ourselves in that struggle ourselves. Like, you know, when you choose a partner, like they say here, I mean, it's your choice. You may have make a commitment with a different person, but it comes here, you know, this one is more attractive. I'll go for the more attractive. So <laughs> I'll have to deal with the comment. <laughs> But overall, you know, all those very important factors in our lives, we have agreed upon it before reincarnation, and it has a name and should have our attention as much as possible, because when we are talking uh, about relationship, we are talking about the two-way streets. I, I mean, you have to do everything you can to do your part, not necessarily the other part will be willing and ready to accept uh, in your time, but it's going yeah. to happen. If not <clears throat> late in this reincarnation, in another one, we can be sure about it. So before we finish, I'd like to uh, remind you that this weekend we have two talks one that is going to be by SGNY. We have a friend from Brazil that he is a, he's a Jewish spiritist person, and he has been giving a lot of talks and shed a lot of light in terms of talking about the Old Testament and, uh, uh, and including all the visions that we have in spiritism. And so he will, it will be this uh, Sunday, uh, at, at, the, uh, at 11 a.m., his name is Alvaro Mordecai, mm -hmm. at 11 a.m., and he will be talking about uh, the first two commandments of the Mosaic Law. Uh, of course, talking from a spiritist perspective and with Jesus and etc. So don't miss it. We are going to be transmitting that through, not through Zoom, it is going to be the YouTube, our YouTube channel. So go to our YouTube channel, Spiritist Group of New York, and subscribe. Or otherwise, Sunday at 11, just go there and get into, and don't miss it because it's going to be very interesting. And Saturday, at the same time, the United States Spiritist Federation will have a talk We'll present a talk with uh, a, a nuclear engineer person, Rejani Planner from Vienna, that is going to give us a talk about thoughts, a driving force. And again, it is in, going to be transmitted uh, in the Facebook of the United States Spiritist Federation and the YouTube of the United States Spiritist Federation. So go there, uh, take the, the chance today, go there and, and subscribe for the, the both of them. Uh, Spiritist Group of New York and United States Spiritist Federation. Both are at 11 a.m. 
one Saturday and the other one Sunday. And of course, both of them are in English. So we are going to be doing our final prayer now. Because our lesson today is about love, love in the family, love in the relationships, and gratitude. Let us send our loving thoughts of gratitude first to our heavenly creator for the blessing of life, for the blessing of the moments of happiness that we have in our lives, and even the moments of struggle that helps us to grow and to learn. May we take this opportunity to understand that pain, like a traveling professor that knocks at everyone's door, and so that we have to be willing to accept pain, always asking, what does this pain bring to us in terms of knowledge and what this pain can teach us in this moment? And for those moments of struggles like the ones we are going through now, we pray to the good spirits that we may be assisted and guided, that we may find the strength to the courage, that we may be witnesses of all the things we have been learning through so many years of spiritist studies, that we can be spiritual people, Christian people in times like the ones we are living now. May we give the support to all of them that are in need, that do not have the same stability and spiritual structure to deal with this. May we remain calm with hope in our hearts. And we pray to our heavenly creator that the whole world at this moment may be enveloped by this energy of love and healing forces so that soon enough we may be able to see our lives from a different perspective, returning to our day-to-day -day lives but renewed in the spirits and learning because of the collective experience we are having together now. We pray for the good spirits for assistance and protection for our homes, for our loved ones and for ourselves. And may we keep with our studies, our determination to become better people. So thank you so much.